Insomniac is one of those studios that you look at when it comes to accessibility, and they have come a long way in their accessibility journey. From Marvel Spider-Man to Miles Morales, there are amazing accessibility options in those games that really, really push Insomniac as being one of the leaders for accessibility in this industry. Does the new Ratchet & Clank rift apart exclusively to the PlayStation 5? Follow along in that same journey? Is it potentially the accessible game of the year? Let's find out. Hi, I'm Steve Saylor, I'm blind, and if you're wondering how I'm able to play video games if I'm blind, if you take a look at the video here, and the video is not there, click the link in the description down below to see exactly what I see when I'm playing video games. So I wanna thank Sony for sending over a review copy of Ratchet & Clank Rift Apart for me to be able to play today. Uh, and this review is actually gonna be a little bit different than uh, my past reviews over the past little while. We're going back to the old school conversational review uh, because I have two amazing people and two amazing friends uh, that'll be joining me today. We have Courtney Craven from Can I Play That? You might remember them from our review of The Last of Us Part Two last year. And then introducing Stacy Jenkins, aka Stacy of Gotham. And we'll be kind of talking about a lot of the accessibility that's gonna be in the game, but also they do have their own individual reviews. Um, Courtney has a deaf and hard of hearing review over at Can I Play That? And also Stacy has a cognitive review on her YouTube channel. Both of those will be linked in the description down below. So I should have a little disclaimer here in that we did just receive the day one patch less than 24 hours ago for us to be able to uh, review. Um, it does actually have some accessibility options that we didn't have uh, during our review period. Um, but so we didn't have a chance to be able to play around with it that much. But in general, our review still stands uh, even with the new uh, accessibility options. Um, but uh, we weren't able to go into further detail with those new options in there. So anyway, let's jump right into the conversation with uh, Stacy and Courtney and talk about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. Cool. All right, so we have uh, Courtney and Stacy here with us. We're gonna be talking about Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart, and we're just gonna kind of start off the conversation with just our general thoughts uh, of the game itself um, before we really get into the uh, actual accessibility of it. Um, Courtney, why don't we start off with you? What did you think uh, of Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart? I'm having a hard time with it because I suck at platformers and I suck at shooting. So, you know, it's uh, it's a bit of a challenge, but I really, I'm a big fan of Insomniac's writing and storytelling. So that aspect of it, I really, really enjoy. So as as much as I'm struggling with it, I want to power through and, and finish it because it's a great story that I'm really excited to see through to the end. For sure. Stacy, how about you? Yeah, I'm actually finding it a lot more difficult than I expected to. In my head, I thought, oh, you know, this is a kid's game. It should be really easy, but it's um, it's actually quite challenging. The action is quite uh, is quite heavy. Um, but yeah, I'm enjoying it. I'm really enjoying the style. I think it's gorgeous to look at. Um, one of my struggles has been that it's quite visually overwhelming uh, because it's very bright. There's a lot going on at all times. There is absolutely nothing subtle about the game. It's in your face all the time uh which can be a lot at times um but but it's a good game it's a great game and there are a lot of accessibility options in there there's a lot of stuff that i've been playing around with so you know i've been enjoying it yeah i would pretty much echo uh both of you i mean i've kind of uh been saying it or at least i've been describing this game as kind of like it's 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 if if pixar had made a video game um it just looks Gorgeous. The animation, um, the story is really good. And even as a, um, a new Ratchet and Clank like player, I've never played any of the games myself. Uh, I I actually was able to pick up the story pretty pretty well. Like, sure, there's some Easter eggs in there that I'm sure if I played the previous games, I would have been like, oh, that's cool. But to me, it was sort of uh, I was able to follow along pretty well and, and able to pick up on on everything. Um, yeah, visually, it, it's there's a lot. Uh, and I will say, if if you wanted to like, if you wanted a game that truly tries to be able to show off uh, the the all the aspects of the PlayStation Five. This is definitely it. Um, yeah. One of the things that uh, that they showed off, uh, actually, they like as of this recording, they put out a uh, Insomniac put out a clip yesterday where they showed off performance mode, which basically will put the game in, a, in a, at a hard sixty FPS, and just the like, just how smooth that is, and also as well, 
the, the, they kind of touted the fact that like when you when you use riffs and you kind of like jump from world to world, it's like instantaneous and it truly is like there's a quick like not even a second flash on screen and you're like and the whole level completely changes uh, and it just it's really it goes to show like how much they were able to do uh, with the PS5 and with that hardware and um, yeah if you really wanted like a true kind of like test and like if you want to see what the PS5 can do this game is is definitely it um, but like both of you said it's like it, it is definitely a, a struggle and I probably would not have gotten through it if it wasn't for the accessibility options that are there which there are plenty um, so we'll get into that in a sec but uh, yeah so uh, like uh, Stacy what did, what did you think of just the general like overall accessibility um, uh, for Ratchet and Clank for me personally, a lot of the uh, a lot of the accessibility issues that I have I, and the barriers that I have are sort of cognitive. So I do get quite overwhelmed, um, especially with games like this, where there's just a lot on screen at all times. Um, so I found that a bit of a struggle, but I actually switched on uh, the high contrast mode, which I've never considered before. I've never considered as a sort of a cognitive accessibility thing, but um, I was playing around with it and I turned it on and I, it actually made a huge difference. So I was able to um, pick a preset and then go into that preset and customize it further. So I would have the enemies were just shaded red um, and then objects that I could interact with uh, had their own colors too. And that really helped me pick out the important information because it's really difficult when there's so much on screen, there's NPCs, there's friendlies, there's enemies, and it's just, there's a lot going on. So it was really helpful for me to kind of just like filter out the extra information and be like, this is the stuff I actually need to look at. So that made a massive difference for me. I probably would have put in the game, put the game down if I, if I didn't have that. Um, but yeah, I really love that. That helped me a whole bunch. Now you haven't had a chance to play uh, Miles Morales uh, fully as as of yet, have you? Not fully, no. I'm. I got about two hours into it because having played Ratchet, I really wanted to go back and have a look at the options in there. But um, yeah, the Miles obviously had the the high contrast modes too. Um, I definitely, yeah, definitely felt like I relied on them a lot with Ratchet. Gotcha. Yeah. Well, um, uh, cause I know that Courtney, I think you've, you've played a uh, uh, miles as well. Um, what do you think? Like, is that something that, um, that will definitely, that I wanted to touch on because insomniac has been doing some really good work when it comes to accessibility, uh, through their accessibility journey with, uh, Spider-Man and miles Morales and now with, with ratchet, um, and, and kind of jumping on in regards to the high contrast mode. Uh, what did you sort of think of that? Like compared, like, like I guess we'll start with the like hot contrast mode from like Miles and, and and Ratchet, but then just sort of go into kind of what are your general thoughts of accessibility from from uh, comparison from both those games? Sure. Um, like Stacy, I'm finding myself you know high contrast mode isn't something that I generally use. I used it in The Last of Us too, just because there's so much stuff you can collect, and by the end of an area, I got kind of tired, but. But in, in Ratchet and Clank, there's there's so much stuff all the time to pay attention to that it's hard to it's hard to like be able to focus and zero in on, okay, I need that ammo box, I need to shoot that guy, you know. So I'm I'm finding myself turning on high contrast mode in Ratchet and Clank, whereas in Miles Morales I didn't need it. Or in the the Spider-Man remaster, I didn't really need it because it was easy enough to find what you were what you were looking for, what you wanted to do just in the the default game world but in this one it's really overwhelming so i i i there's a lot of things that are overwhelming me in in the game and uh the the high contrast mode is helping to minimize that a little bit but still i'm struggling a bit <laughs> that's okay I, 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 I feel like i'm playing like a, a souls game and um when i discovered the 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 newest mode the difficulty mode that they added in the day one patch um i think it's it's rookie recruit or rookie explorer i think it's rookie recruit makes you invincible and i'm finding that because there are some deaf and hard of hearing accessibility features that are lacking i wouldn't be able to succeed in the game if not for that god mode you know because there was one level I won't go into details and spoil it, but there was one level where you're surrounded by enemies all the time. And I died 13 times just trying to like get to an enemy, kill all the people that you need to kill. And 
I died 13 times before I'm like, okay, screw it. I'm going to turn on this easy mode and just stop trying because I'm not going to be successful clearly. And, and I think that the struggle there was there's a lack of visual cues. Like if somebody's shooting at you or if there's an enemy like over here, just outside of your line of vision, there's nothing that tells you that they're there. If you don't like hear them, if you're not playing with the the spatial 3D headphones, which I don't because it doesn't mean anything to me anyway. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, there's there's a couple oversights or, or missing things that are really impacting my my experience with the game. Yeah, I, I definitely would uh, would agree with you on that. Um, touching on the high contrast mode, I I agree. Like I was the same as you. Like I didn't use it as much in Miles Morales because it wasn't really a huge need for it uh, for me because I was able to follow along pretty much what I like with everything I need to do. With this one, yeah, there's there's a lot happening on screen that high contrast mode is pretty much the the only way to be able to kind of get through them at least even for me i would say the, probably the ones i the areas i needed the most they're like without really spoiling it there's essentially there's these um little like snail sort of creatures that are called speedles which uh which i guess is like a, a cross between a beetle and, and the snail i don't know uh where essentially like you have to use, use them as sort of way to traverse uh like dangerous sort of like swamp areas or acid areas um and in order for me to be able to know what is it like an enemy or what like if it's a very fast sort of like chase like a chase sort of sequences um you kind i kind of had to use them even when you're grinding on rails uh in certain sequences and you have to move pretty fast the high contrast mode was the only way i could be able to to do that because i there were certain things on the tracks that can sort of obstruct you that if you hit them you die and you have to start over again and so high contrast mode like is the was for me the only way to get through them um, which is something that I never thought I would sort of ha like uh, like have to say to a degree because it's like I like that there are options in there and I, and I appreciate whenever the like if, if players have to use them for the entire game, then that's that's fair. And I t like I totally understand that. Um, but for me, it just seemed like the, uh, uh, I've never had a come across a situation where I've absolutely had to use that feature in order to be able to get past a certain point. Um, and, and it's it, it's it's always an option and it helps and it makes it removes barriers and it, it kind of it makes you feel more comfortable. That's why I've always felt with accessibility. It just removes the barrier so that your disability doesn't get in the way. But with this, it was sort of like in order for me to be able to get past these parts, I had to use uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, this and other features we'll talk about, um, which is something that I'm like that. I agree with you Like in, in regards to even going to the difficulty, as you mentioned. Um, I went in sort of like the, the not the easiest difficulty, um, but the one I think it was called Rebel is kind of the one, uh, the mm. the difficulty I went for. And I didn't have like a, a case of more actually where I should mention that we only just got access to the day one patch uh, yesterday. So uh, we haven't had a chance, a chance to play, play around with the new accessibility features that are uh, that were in the day one patch. Um, but one of them was the new difficulty mode. And uh, I didn't like I found that with Rebel, I was OK with it and I was able to come roll credits. That's kind of like so that if that sort of helps in any way for anyone, yes, that does help. Like it, like it is rare for me to be able to roll credits on a game. So that di like it, it didn't really, I didn't really need a slower difficulty to get past it. But I can definitely see where that can be the case. Stacy, what about you? What would like how? What was your thoughts in regards to uh, the difficulties uh, or the difficulty uh, modes in this game? So I think I was playing on the same uh, difficulty mode that you were. Um, I am dying quite a lot, um, but I'm still having fun with it. Um, and something uh, additional that they added in the uh, day one patch as well was they actually now explain what the difficulty modes affect, which is something that I was looking for because I feel like when I start up a game and you know I've got maybe five or six difficulty modes to choose from, and none of them really tell me exactly what they mean so you know does it affect the enemy's health are they going to be more aggressive uh does it affect puzzle you know what what exactly did did these difficulty modes affect so um i was really really happy to see that they added that in so uh when you have a look at each accessibility mode uh each difficulty mode you can see um all the different things that it affects so that was super super helpful i think that will help people kind of figure out what the what the best difficulty difficulty mode is for them which i think is really important because otherwise i can just stare at a game for you know a good half an hour before i even start up because i just cannot make that decision yeah i i would agree with you that and um and the, like, regard, like let's talk about combat for uh for a minute because that is something that 
obviously with this kind of game, it's because uh, I do want to touch on on both sides. Basically, there's the combat aspect and then there's obviously the platformer traversal uh, aspect because it's essentially this game is a third person shooter platformer. Um, and so for for me, the combat that I uh, and you both have kind of mentioned how difficult it can be. I also will, will have to say like another feature that I had to be able to use, which actually in a way, actually, I kind of wish that other games would have was the ability to be able to slow down the game speed. Um, that is something that you can be able to set on a like on a, a controller shortcut, which is really great. So you can be able to set it on to the D-pad uh, and you can and you can use all four buttons for that D, on the D-pad to be able to set as shortcuts. So I use that to turn on high contrast mode when I needed or to turn on game speed and on and off when I needed, which was really great. And so you have like these three different game speed options. You got to go normal, which is 100 percent or you can do it at 70%, 50%, or 30%. And I used it pretty much at 30%, which is sort of the, the uh, where it, lo it lowers this game speed about 30%. It was just enough that it was, it, like, I was able to react okay in combat situations, um, but it didn't really help much in regards to, like, obviously, the same thing as you said, Courtney, where essentially, essentially like, there's so many kind of enemies coming at you at once, where I had to like kind of like it was enough for me to be able to react it like I could get away from those situations. But there was often times where it just felt like it was kind of like, oh, I'm going to die at any given moment. And sometimes I did. Um, but without it, like I would not have like this. This it, There's just a lot happening. And the it, a regular 100 percent speed, it is just it's a lot. Um, and it can I can it, like until I discovered that mode. It was like it like it basically was like night and day for me um, when the, the, the difference when I was able to utilize that. And I pretty much used that, I'd say, 100 percent of the time throughout the game. Like anytime I was in combat or in any sort of face or fast sort of chase sequences and traversal and stuff like that, I pretty much was using game speed um, set it like that. Well, they said it's 30 percent uh, a slower speed. Um, so. Yeah. Um, what like so? What are your general thoughts of sort of the combat? Um, Courtney, we, you kind of mentioned a little bit. Like, could you be able to go into detail, sort of the the kind of the issues that you had with combat, and maybe if you had some good things about combat that that you enjoyed? Yeah. Um. You know, I think the, the as far as good things, I think the guns are really fun, and um, the ability to lock on and have auto aim really helps. Kind of limit the overwhelmingness because you know in in a lot of games like if you're playing far cry or something you know you're running into an area where you know there are enemies they're going to be like not right in front of you but kind of scattered in front of you ish right and so you can kind of pick them off and then in this game you go into an area and they just spawn behind you after you think you've gotten everybody okay i got that guy got that guy got those and then there's like six more behind you. And it's like, what is happening? You can't get away from it. And then like, it's, it's kind of obvious that gameplay is meant to be gunplay, not melee. And mm -hmm. melee is my, my default if I can't um, be stealthy, which you can't really in this game because there's nothing, nothing stealthy about the, the drill gun or the lightning gun. You know, once you shoot it, everybody there knows that you're there. So my default is to try and do melee because I'm not that great at aiming. So the, the lock on and auto aim really helps with that. But even with that, I'm still finding that there's just so much in terms of combat and, and the amount of enemies and the waves of enemies that even with the guns and the, the auto aim and stuff, I still, once I get past a certain point in a fight, I'm just spamming the melee button, hoping to hit whoever I can that's near me because you you kind of lose your ability to keep track of everybody. Mm -hmm. And without there being any visual cues for the enemies that are nearby, you just kind of hit the button and hope for the best. Yeah, I'll say that the auto aim and, and target lock was something that I had to use quite a bit. And uh, and I'm I'm the same as you is like anytime there was enemies around me, essentially like there's a there's a weapon in there called the executor, which is kind of like a lightning bolt shotgun um, it, that that basically that was the only way I was able to clear out any enemies that were around me. Like it was just spamming the fire button and just let auto aim and target lock who kind of do its thing, um, which helped in a way, because essentially all I really need to worry about was just like keep moving, because that's the thing with this is that you got to keep moving. You can't stand still 
at any given point in combat uh because otherwise you're gonna you're just gonna get swarmed and, and die um so that's so at least with that with the auto aim and, and that i didn't have to worry about that as much um which yeah but it still can be difficult uh stacy what about you what like how was the combat uh for you like what was things things you liked what are the things that uh that you think needs improvement on so i also really appreciated that i didn't necessarily have to be accurate with the sort of the lock on um lock on aim because i'm i'm just you know spraying wildly um i i'm not accurate i'm also not a you know a shooter player really so um i suck at that um like courtney i i i much prefer slower kind of stealthy games so i'm always a bit <laughs> a bit out of my element um with with these kind of games and yeah, I, I like the melee, um, and it's something that I, I really enjoyed in Sunset Overdrive as well, which was my favorite um, Insomniac game. But I did feel like in Ratchet, you're, you know, the melee is not great. And also, I just kept getting hit really quickly. So it's kind of like you, they don't really want you to use the melee. So you're, you know, you're shooting most of the time. Um, I also didn't actually find uh, the game speed reduction until uh, we spoke yesterday which I think really would have helped me a lot. Just that little reduction, especially on those, you know, really, really intense parts, especially when you're sort of having to dodge like multiple things at once. You know, you've got enemies with a beam over here and another one over here. So that would have been really helpful, um, which I think also goes to show just how many accessibility options there are because I just completely missed it. Um, there are so many and I think sometimes it's quite difficult to kind of pick out the ones that you really need um so I don't know whether maybe having uh you know like some games have kind of presets um accessibility presets that that might have helped maybe it might have sort of you know shown me that that was a thing that was available because I didn't I didn't realize that it was available um but it's, it's a cool feature I think it's a really really cool feature and I think it it really works in this game and I think it's it's yeah it's been necessary for a lot of players I think yeah, it's definitely going to be one I, I think a lot of um, a lot of people that we know um, and people that are going to discover that it's going to help quite a bit. Um, and and you're right. It's like having, there's there are a lot of options in this um, and you're going to need definitely quite a few of them. Um, but there's also ones that you can be able to just sort of like discover and, and find on your own. But also it would be nice to kind of like have that sort of like like a preset that kind of would just would enable uh, a bunch of these in, in, like in general just to kind of get like uh, uh just to, just so at least you can kind of get going uh right off the top instead of like having to go through menu by menu uh to find the things that uh, you hopefully you can be able to you can be able to need um so I, I i agree with you in that one so let, let's now go into sort of the traversal aspect because there definitely is a a lot of platforming uh in this in uh in traditional sort of ratchet uh fashion there's there's a lot to be able to kind of like jump around and 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 fly and glide and like a whole bunch of uh, areas you can be able to kind of get to and get access to uh what did you think of the uh, of that aspect Courtney, what, what about you like how did you find uh the platforming in this i'm not great at platforming like i i think i was born bad at puzzles and and platformers kind of feel like puzzles gamified same <laughs> so I, love can, I love that you can skip the puzzles because like i just puzzles make me feel bad about myself so i just skip them i don't no puzzles no thank you and then in this one um as stacy brought up when we were chatting yesterday in those the the glitch puzzles where you that little robot mm -hmm. dude the the movement of the camera is just so unsettling like you're going this way and then oh you're up the wall and the whole camera shifts and it's it's mm -mm, nope can't can't do it mm -mm. but for general navigation when you're playing as uh ratchet or uh what's her name rivet rivet yeah yeah when you're playing as them i really need to be able to either place custom waypoints so that I can like chip away at where I need to get to or have like, um, you know, in Outriders, there's that trail that shows you where you're going. So mm -hmm. you can just follow the line. I need more help with navigation because it's just, especially a lot of the worlds that have, you know, canyons or mountains or anything like that. It's so hard to know. Okay, well, if you go this way, you're going to fall off a cliff. You know, so it's it it would be super, super helpful to be able to place my own waypoints within the map so that I could kind of just slowly get from point A to point B. Okay, well, now I'm here, so I need to go here. 
and be able to chip away at it like that because I'm I'm kind of having trouble navigating the the large worlds. Mm -hmm. They're not. It's not obvious, even though there is the waypoint and you can make them gigantic on the screen. They're not quite helpful enough to show you. Okay, well, how do you get there? Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you on that because, like, you can, yeah, you can set waypoints if they're for points of interest on the map, yeah. but yeah, it doesn't sort of help you navigate to where, like, how to be able to get there, especially if it's an area where you have to do like a bunch of platforming, like jumping or gliding or whichever, just to get to that. Um, there's nothing that sort of directs you to that. Um, and and I want to touch on on the glitch, uh, like a uh, little robot uh, se sequences, because first off. I think it's the, it's it's the most char like glitch is the most charming character in the entire game. Uh, I I want to have her as my best friend. Um, it, she's so freaking cute. However, those love th those specific levels, as cute and as fun as they are, are a lot. And Stacey, I want to kind of touch on you because this I think go goes into your into your review a bit. Um, w like how was how were those sequences for you? And then if you want to touch on in regards to the traversal and platforming. Um, from your perspective, uh, for from cognitive uh, accessibility, yeah, I definitely found the glitch segments very difficult. Um, literally, as soon as the camera would, you know, flip and I'd be on a wall or on a ceiling, I would immediately want to throw up. Um, and you can skip those sections, which is great, but I just wish that I didn't have to because, like you said, they're really cute and really fun. Um, so yeah, it's great that you can skip those segments. You can skip the uh, the puzzle segments when you're uh, when you're clank. So that's really cool. I would have maybe appreciated some sort of hints or something like that. But uh, yeah, I really liked it. Um, as for traversal, I feel like it it feels quite satisfying. And I think again, that's a lot because I feel like it's borrowed a lot from Sunset Overdrive. So there's you know like the the wall running um, and just a lot of the traversal. It feels really satisfying. It's really like it feels really smooth and I really like it. But like Courtney said, I'm also having a little bit of trouble with navigation because, um, yeah, there's no like there's no trail to follow. And a lot of it's like quite vertical. So sometimes it's it's quite difficult to figure out exactly how to get there. So I have, you know, got lost a few times in the game. Um, also, from a cognitive perspective, I feel like I forget where I've been <laughs> a lot of the time because my memory sucks. So um, I will probably get lost a little bit easier or a little bit quicker than than some people but yeah I think that's definitely something that was missing that would just help elevate the game for me a little bit um and just make it feel a bit better because it can get quite frustrating when you're kind of you know getting stuck and getting annoyed and going around in circles and stuff like that so yeah I will say as well and this in and, and forgive me for the I guess the minor uh, spoiler in this um so but this will definitely help when it comes to to accessibility um uh, later on is that so when you're starting off the game and you're going into the different worlds um you generally are discovering different at, like different areas and, and sort of different items that you can sort of collect in the game there's a lot of collectibles there's a lot of things you can be able to find like there's golden bolts there's the uh a bunch of uh, different armor sets that you can be able to find and a bunch of different things for each individual planet that you need to be able to like locate and find to be able to get access to different new like rewards and stuff like that and at the beginning, there's not there's nothing on the map that really kind of like shows you where those things are. However, there is a thing that you law unlock, I'd say probably about just past halfway in the game that opens up the map and will unlock all of those waypoints and points of interest. So you can be able to find those things. Um, it would have been great to be able to have that those at the beginning. But I will like we'll say if you are ha like if you want to collect all the things and you're in and, and you're having trouble trying to be able to find them. Wait until later on. It is going to be part of the story. Wait until you find that basically that de there's going to a device that you'll get that will sort of unlock the entire map on every planet. So you won't have the, like you. So then you can go back and collect all the things that you wanted to be able to uh, to collect. So I know that for those that are completionists, you want to be able to complete a whole entire uh, planet before you move on to the next one. Trust me, it's like you're, you're, you're you can try that and that might take longer. But if you're willing to wait and you can get this uh, this sort of unlocking the map feature and you can be able to find everything else uh, on each on each planet as you go to um, just there's a lot in there and there's a lot of systems overlapping each other, which is great. But it's just it like it, it, I think a little bit of tweaking would make this game even more accessible. And to me, I think this is definitely in the running for accessible game of the year, like 100 percent. 
hands down. Like it just it, like we haven't seen any other games come out as of yet. But right now, for me, it's so far is that for me. And I want to talk uh, touch on you. So, uh, Stacy, what was like like what are your sort of general thought like overall thoughts of the, of the game? And and would you recommend uh, people play it? Yeah, so I, I kind of agree with you there on the on the sort of uh, not not wanting to have to rely on the high contrast mode because there are times in the game where I'm kind of feeling a bit a bit bummed out that you know I've got a shader on an enemy so I'm kind of missing out on some of the like the really cool design and stuff like that so I kind of wish that I didn't have to rely on it but you know that being said uh, the accessibility options in there are amazing and you know there there are lots of them so. I would absolutely recommend this uh, from a cognitive perspective. I guess I would just say keep in mind that there's going to be options in all of the accessibility menus and all of the non-accessibility menus. So uh, you might have to do a little bit of trial and error and have a little bit of play, a play around with things. Um, but hopefully you'll be able to kind of um, come to come to a, a set of options that really work for you. Um, and yeah, will help you play the game because it's, it's a good game and I'm really enjoying it. It's really cute. It's really fun. Um, so yeah, I would recommend it. Courtney, what about you? I would definitely recommend it. I mean, even even though there are a few things that are missing in terms of deaf accessibility, it's not to the point where it's going to wall off anybody from being able to play the game and enjoy the game. Um, you know, there there are some improvements to subtitles that could be made, like directional indicators, like who's there's speaker names, but you have no idea where they're coming from. And um just little things like that. And and like I had mentioned, the visual cues for who's shooting at you and where the enemies are, that would help a lot. But there are enough options. There are enough difficulty levels. If you, if you tweak things and play around, I think most people will be able to enjoy the game after, after they've tweaked things and, and done a lot of trial and error. There's enough there that you can play it without really missing anything, even if there are barriers to getting to that point. I would I would uh, echo a lot of that. Yeah, the, like after you've done a bit of tweaking, like even I think probably about even quarter way through, almost about halfway through, I was still sort of tweaking my own setup just to kind of like make it even more uh, uh, enjoyable to be able to play and, and kind of getting like, my disability out of the way so that I can be able to to, uh, to play it. Uh, I think that that's going to be kind of a constant throughout the game, but it's also something that I would still recommend playing if you're if you if you're able to have a ps5 right now um or if you are going to be able to get one in the future this is definitely one of those games that i would recommend um and the fact that already in the in the first sort of like uh first year of uh of the ps5 we already have two very large games uh that are exclusive to the ps5 with miles morales and with ratchet and clank funny enough it's from the same studio that are all like are really good for accessibility and and that's something that i'm i'm very happy to be able to uh to like to talk about and, and, and say because that's just really really cool and kind of shows a cool direction that sony uh seems to be going at least with their their first party exclusives so i again i would say 100 percent. i would recommend this game and uh, we'll see how it comes out at the end of the year when it like uh, if there's another game that's going to be able to be like okay you, you like you you if you know accessibility well wait do you see this so uh, i'm really excited to be able to to do that and um um yeah thank you good both job, good job <laughs> exactly perfect thank you so very much for watching once again you can be able to check out both courtney and stacy's individual reviews it links in the description down below also if you want to be able to follow stacy and courtney please do i'll leave links to their uh socials down below uh and if actually if you have any questions for us or for myself uh please leave a comment in the youtube video down below or hit both myself uh courtney uh, or stacy or myself on twitter or on the socials and you can ask us any questions there and we'll try to be able to answer as best as we can if you like this video please leave hit the thumbs up button it really helps sort of like uh, uh the algorithm of this of these videos for me uh if you want to be able to hit the subscribe button i would really appreciate it so you can be able to see more of my videos and if you want to be notified when new videos come out once you hit the subscribe button hit the bell notification icon as well uh, so you can be able to be notified as to when new videos come out thank you so much for watching uh i really do appreciate it i'll see you in the next video and as always i remain obediently yours bye